Emily Hickel, a woman of mystery, never outspoken in public, always the calm in the eye of her husband's political storms. Alaskans are truly independent, regardless of political party. We like to stand our ground. By the time Walter Hickel was elected governor a second time, Irma Lee Hickel had the first lady job down pat. Though she seemed to be a pro from the get-go when her husband was elected in 1966. As a kid, Walter Hickel was dyslexic, and even though successful in life, he always struggled with the written word. But Irma Lee helped him on that front as she raised six rambunctious boys. Mom was a taskmaster, and I called her the little Mussolini. Joe Hickel says here at the Hickel home, his mom constantly reminded the boys about their chores. Sticky notes, and she put them on your headboard and your bed. Even on the toilet seat. But the kids knew she always had their best interest at heart. Unconditional love, always there. Always there. You don't do a big family with a lot of organization skills. Cindy and Malcolm Roberts lived in the Hickel household when they first moved to Alaska. So for a few weeks, a chance to observe Irma Lee in action. She was never a bossy or anything. In my, whenever I was with her at the home, or family or whatever. And never with her husband. They had an amazing partnership. I don't think she was ever put off by his crazy ideas. Crazy ideas that sometimes turned out to be not so crazy, like the time her husband fought to build this hotel. Today, a cornerstone in the Anchorage economy, built to help the city rise from the rubble of the 1964 earthquake. In the face of doubt and criticism, criticism that escalated when Richard Nixon tapped him as Interior Secretary. He became a constant target of cartoonists, especially after the president fired him when he protested the Vietnam War. Not long afterwards, when Nixon visited Alaska, Irma Lee graciously hosted a reception in her home for the very president who sacked her husband. Irma Lee, small in size, but big in the most important ways. I think she believed in Wally's contribution for the future of Alaska. So it wasn't just, is my husband a candidate? But it's like, does Alaska need his ideas to move forward in a positive way? Like most political wives, Irma Lee helped her husband to campaign, and then some. In fact, it was my mom that convinced my dad to run for governor the second time in 1990. She says, Wally, you've got to run for governor again. And uh, with less than a couple minutes left, he went down to the election office and filed just for the, the deadline. What would it take to get you to run this thing? A lobotomy. A play called The Ticket, about an imaginary conversation between Hickel and his one-time political nemesis, Governor Jay Hammond, was about his second race for governor. Irma Lee saw the play twice and suddenly shouted out to the actor who played her husband. Character Jay asks, my character, Wally, why are you running? And I say, my wife, Irma Lee, told me to run, and I always listen to her. My wife, Irma Lee, told me to run, I always listen to her. To which Irma Lee out loud replied, you're darn right you do. You should keep doing it. Although Irma Lee loved a good race as much as Wally, what mattered most, the quality of the journey. She never let the position of first lady ever get to her head, that it's more important to be a real person than to be a political figure. Even if that meant playing host to Lassie, who, by the way, autographed this photo. As well as the legendary pilot, Charles Lindbergh, as he prepared to give a speech to the legislature. And he admitted to Irma Lee that he needed someone. Can someone from the uh, staff please press my surge? What were the surge pants. Surge pants, <laughs> and, and Irma Lee, abso absolutely. So when he left, uh, for whatever, she took it upstairs and she pressed his pants <laughs> and she was very proud of himself. In so many ways, Irma Lee remained true to the young girl raised on an Anchorage homestead. How does it compare with today? Oh my, oh, it was a dream back then. It was a dream. Oh, yes. In this interview with Red Boucher, a lieutenant governor turned talk show host, she reminisced about the simplicity of those early days. And we played basketball and softball and attended hockey games, and we had a great time. But there weren't very many people here. How many were here? Well, I think when I was born, there were about 1,500. Oh, 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 Big time. Fred also asked Wally and Irma Lee 
about their marriage. We still live together as if we were just boy and girl friends. Uh, it's that kind of a thing. That kind of thing called love, a thread through Irma Lee Hickel's life from start to finish.